it's crucial that you take the time to get to know you, especially in a world where we're constantly being told to do this, to be that, to look like this, where it's so easy to lose sight and lose who you truly are. And that is why building your offline presence has never been more important, never been more critical than right now. Hey, it's Carly Burr and welcome back to Taking Life Offline. Today kicks off the first video to a four part series that I'm going to be releasing over the next four weeks. It's going to be getting super deep, super detailed, and very action inspiring all about building your offline presence. I'm about to let you in on everything that I have learned and I'm continuing to learn as it's been nearly nine years of me being offline and building my offline presence. I want to share this with you to help you gain new perspective, to open your eyes to new ways to think about living your life offline and building an offline presence. I want this to be something that you're able to apply in a very actionable way that is most fulfilling to you in your life. Building my offline presence has been like the umbrella that holds everything that I've done to be able to help me stay offline for nearly nine years coming up this August. It's in my mission and my focus in my life to build my life in such a way that's fulfilling offline so I no longer need social media. So I don't need social media to fulfill that form of connection or to receive the validation from people online or to receive the validation of my choices in my life. Over the next four weeks, I'll break down the four main areas that make up my offline presence. I'm going to be getting super detailed. I want this to go beyond the listen. I want this series to be one that is super actionable, one that you take things away each episode and you start implementing into your life so you can start building your offline presence too and get closer to your goal of living your life offline. I want nothing more than for you to have the connection, the support, and the love for yourself and from people in your life offline. So I'm so excited to share everything I've learned and what I'm continuing to learn along my way and will always be continuing to learn throughout the rest of my life all about building an offline presence. Now before we get into it today, I wanted to extend an invitation for you to join us inside my free community called Offline The Community. This is the place to come and connect with people who are striving and on a mission to embrace life offline and prioritize building an offline presence. And specifically over the next four weeks as I'm doing this series, I'm going to be in the community giving specific challenges and actions that correlate to that week's episode. So as I unlock an episode each week, we'll be in the community getting down into the specifics of what to do now and how to apply this into your life. So join us inside the community for your chance during this series and beyond to connect with people who are also striving to build an offline presence. I will leave a link in the description to this episode for you to join us there so we can support you along your way. All right, now let's get into what I'm calling the debut of your offline presence. We're starting with the most important place to begin laying a foundation and building, which is you. Today is all about self-presence and we're going to get into exactly what self-presence means. Presence with yourself means awareness means taking the time to get to know you means spending time alone with your thoughts with your desires with your insecurities and with everything in between i want to take you back down memory lane back to carly circa 2014. <laughs> this is the time when i had graduated high school and i started following the path that everyone else around me was taking that all my family had taken and that just seemed like the next right step to take which was to go to college so I did so only to find myself not long after feeling so incredibly lost, feeling so suffocated, feeling so out of alignment in every single way, shape and form. And so I knew I needed to do something. I knew I had to change this because this did not feel right. This is not what I wanted for my life is to feel this way. So I decided to move three hours south from where I live now with my then boyfriend at the time, now husband. We moved south because we need to create space from life up here for a while to just clear our heads, get some space, and figure out what the heck we wanted from our life. It's so interesting to be able to sit here now and look back in hindsight and pinpoint the moments that were pivotal in my life to get me to the point where I was ready to take my life offline and begin building my offline presence, which is how I say it now. Back then, I didn't know that's what I was doing. So hindsight is such a beautiful thing. It is so cool to see it come full circle. 
So I want to take you back to this pivotal summer. It was summer of 2015. I was living in the desert, feeling disconnected and totally lost in the town three hours south, where I went to get space and figure out myself and figure out what I wanted to do for my life. I did something that ended up being extremely pivotal and impactful in my life that summer, and I had no intention or no idea that it was going to be so impactful. And it all began with a trip to Barnes & Noble, where I bought a journal for myself. The first journal that I had ever purchased and picked out myself. The first journal that hadn't been gifted to me. So this was a shift in my head because I was like, I'm buying this journal. This means that I'm ready to put the time into this. I'm ready to document my life. That's what I thought I was doing at the time. I remember my boyfriend and I were like, let's get journals so we can document our summer here. So when we can look back and remember all the crazy experiences that we had and just really good times. But Little did I know, this journal was actually going to be me, be the entry for me being able to discover myself and work through this season of my life. It was a very quiet, very sacred summer where I was able to create space and find this journal that helped me discover so much and uncover so many wonderful findings, helped me express myself on a page in a way that I never had before. And having my boyfriend do it at the same time we would often share our journal entries with each other or we would keep it to ourselves. But it was really such a time of connection to myself and I learned a whole lot during this process. And it's interesting because simultaneously this summer as I was working through this season of confusion, I found myself at the gym feeling heavily influenced by social media and what was going on around me. So let me get specific. I live in Utah. And at the time, this was summer of 2015, Utah is like influencer hub. It's funny when I talk to people who don't live in Utah and I tell them that, they're like, really? That's surprising. But Utah's like influencer hub, especially back in 2015. All these bloggers were seriously blowing up at this time. And I'd always have people telling me I should help people learn how to get fit because people wanted to learn how I got fit. And I was like, I don't even know. This is just how I was born, but I guess I could help people. So I found myself wanting to start a blog that summer about my fitness, about how to act, how to work out. <laughs> so I literally was in the gym having my husband, well, boyfriend at the time, take pictures of me for a blog that I had planned to start. And this whole time, this has been my experience for the past probably three years before then of people telling me, you should teach people fitness, you should really get into this space. I never wanted to. Never once did I say, I want to help people with this. I even did a personal training um, internship at one point and really realized this is not what I wanted to do. But then that summer, what did I do? I was being influenced by external voices and by things I was seeing on social media of all these bloggers. This looked like this is the thing you should be doing right now. So start a blog. So I was going to start this blog, which I never ended up actually doing, getting it off the ground. I'm pretty sure I started a domain and had one post, but I never told people that I did that. I just did that and realized very quickly this is not aligned. I don't want to be influenced by what everyone else is telling me I need to be doing. I need to listen to myself. This journal that I had this summer was so helpful in figuring out this is not something that I wanted to do. It wasn't something that aligned for me. And I was being heavily influenced by external voices. So here I was feeling pulled in a bunch of different directions and feeling like I am so lost. I need to finally get to know myself at my core, which I started to do through my journaling which resulted in one of the most pivotal things that I've done for my whole entire life up to this point, which was that August, the close of that summer, in my pursuit to get closer to myself at my core, I decided I need to delete my Instagram. This decision was pivotal in building my presence with myself. I needed to turn off the noise to get closer to me. So that lost and confused summer of 2015 ended up being a pinnacle for what my life has become today, which let me be clear is me being confident in who I am and where I'm headed. Me being clear about who I want to be and where I need to improve and where I've been able to improve thus far. Me being present in my relationships and very fulfilled in that way. Me making time for my hobbies and interests and trying to fulfill God's will for me and make an impact in the world in the way that I feel called to. In a nutshell, that summer has allowed for me now to be able to feel at peace 
and to feel joy in my unique path through life. Now, before you stop listening because you're thinking, hmm, thanks, Carly. That was great advice. Thank you so much. You're telling me to go take a summer off and to do absolutely nothing but basically journal. That's not realistic for my life, so thanks for the good advice. <laughs> I'm going to break down exactly what this looks like today because I'm still building my offline presence and I'm not taking summers off. I'm in a very different season of my life, but still actively building my offline presence. So we're going to get into that now, exactly what it looks like today because it looks very different and it's in a way that can be applied to anyone in whatever season you are of your life right now. So here are the specifics of exactly what I've done and what I'm continuing to do today to continue to build myself presence. One, I've become ultra self-aware and I continue to stay self-aware. Two, I prioritize time to myself. And three, journaling or more mindfulness. Now let's break each one of these down beginning with self-awareness. Self-awareness is key. It is everything. It's so important because how are you supposed to know where to start building if you don't know where the foundation is supposed to be set in the first place? We begin with self-awareness. How do we become self-aware? We become self-aware by being honest, by asking yourself where you've come from, by observing that, by looking at where you currently are, and then taking the things that you observed to someone who knows you very well and saying, here's what I've observed about myself at this season or in that season. Tell me what you've observed of me, if this is accurate, and what you would add to what my observations are. Now, this is not to say you need to put a lot of stock in what other people are thinking about you or what other people say about you, but for me personally, in building my self-awareness, this has been the most helpful thing for me to take someone who knows me very well, this person being my husband, and being able to say, use him as like a soundboard, as someone who I can bounce what I, who I am off of, and then he can reflect to me who he sees me as, and another opinion from the outside, because if you're not used to being self-aware and being honest with yourself, it's kind of uncomfortable and it can be kind of hard. So having a person who knows you to be that soundboard has been extremely helpful and has kept me self-aware over all these years and in the years to come. If you're not used to being honest with yourself, this may feel very uncomfortable. This may feel like a gut punch, but a loving gut punch because it has your best interest in mind. And something that I did also that summer 2015 with my boyfriend was we would take time to say to each other five things we liked about that person, loved about that person, something they were good at, five things, and also five things that, that, that they could do to improve. We would do this exercise often, and let me tell you, when we first started doing it, it would take us a really long time to come up with just five of each of those things. And we would often include these things in our journal as well. We would talk about the things we need to do to improve, the things that we were currently good at, which was helping each of us become more self-aware as we are pointing out the things that we saw in each other. And this is a great exercise to do with yourself as well. Point out five things you feel you are good at, five things you love about yourself, and five things you feel like you could do to improve. And then having someone else do the same thing for you is so helpful, so beneficial. I consider myself to be a highly self-aware person and I attribute a lot of that to those exercises that I used to do back in 2015 and that have continued on in my life to this day. They just look a little less structured, but we still do this together very often. All right, on to the next thing that I do to continually grow my self-presence is prioritizing time to myself. Time to yourself being time free from distractions, time in silence, time to hear your thoughts over the thoughts of others. And this has largely been created in my life through my decision to leave social media. I feel like I have a lot of time to myself because I don't fill my little pockets of time throughout the day or at the end of the day or out in the morning. I don't fill that time with tapping into the world. I fill that time with being here present with myself. And like most things I talk about, this could be very uncomfortable if you're not used to spending this time alone with your thoughts and without distractions. But like a muscle, the more you work on it, the more you put in the reps, it's going to get more comfortable. It's going to grow. 
you have to move through the discomfort intentionally while keeping the overarching, the big goal in mind. I've also taken myself to lunch. I've taken myself to go have a meal by myself and just spending time alone in my thoughts and alone in the space around me. And this time is great because it kind of allows you to take yourself on a date. For you to take yourself out and ask yourself in your head the questions that you would ask someone who's sitting across from you. Ask those to yourself. Tap in to here. And I fully understand it can be really hard depending on the season of life you're in to find lots of time to yourself. But it doesn't have to be a whole lot of time. You can do this in the small pockets of time that you have throughout your day. And you do have them if you're being completely honest with yourself. Even if you're busy with two little kids, like I find myself in this specific season. I remember when my husband and I first got married, I had loads of time to prioritize myself and my alone time. He would leave to work super early in the morning before I would wake up. So I had the mornings to myself. I had the afternoons when I got home from work because he still wasn't home at that time. I had loads of time to myself and to be alone. But today, it looks very, very different in this season. I have these two little girls who are everything to me and use up a lot of my time. And so prioritizing myself has become much more difficult in this season. I had a baby exactly a year ago from now. She just turned one actually today. And I nursed my babies for a year. I'm grateful that I can do that. And that's a choice that I intentionally made and I wanted to do. But I understood that the sacrifice you make to doing that is your alone time. Because especially for the first six plus months, that baby is with you constantly and everywhere that you go because you are their primary source of life, of food. So with that understanding and knowing this was going to happen, this being my second child, I found myself about six months in being like, I really feel like I need to prioritize the time to myself. And so I started to be more intentional about the time I was spending away from her, the time that I was spending by myself. I started to really make sure that time I was spending alone was in doing things that filled my cup. Doing that really helped me show up as a better mom, as a better wife, and as a better person. So prioritizing time to yourself and spending that time doing things that fill your cup. And if you don't know what fills your cup, if you're so disconnected from you and from that, this is a great opportunity for you to try some things out, dabble in some interests, dabble in some hobbies, figure out what is going to fill your cup. But the important part is prioritizing this time to yourself, to do you. The final step I'm gonna to share today with building your self presence is journaling and mindfulness. Journaling was pivotal in the beginning of my journey to becoming more present with myself. It was absolutely pivotal. I don't make as much time now in my life as I used to, but I recommend if you are someone who is just starting to get to know yourself, buying yourself a brand new journal. Not a journal that you've had in your drawer for years, starting fresh with a brand new journal and label this as your self-discovery journal. You're building your um, offline presence journal. Make it specific for this purpose and spend time, make the time to get to know yourself through writing, through journaling, through specific prompts, which I will be sharing inside the community if you are joining us there during this series. Having this journal is a great place to write out those five things that you love about yourself, to write out those five things that you need to improve on. You can write about your deepest desires, you can write about anything that's on your mind. You can brain dump. That is what's so beautiful about journaling, is you can get everything that's in here out and onto the paper, and it really is therapeutic, and it's a way to work through whatever season of life you might be in, and a really good way to get to know you. Those are the three things that I do or have done to build myself presence. And I hope you're not feeling overwhelmed. I feel like I went over a lot, but I really wanted to make this detailed and I wanted to make it actionable for you. Let's do a quick recap over everything we went over in this specific episode, all about building your self presence. I shared my story about why it was so important for me to be able to build my offline presence and specifically my presence with myself at this time in my life where I was feeling heavily influenced by what I was seeing on social media. We went into detail about three things that I currently do or have done to build my presence with myself over the past nearly nine years and continue to do today. And those three things were, I've become ultra self-aware, I prioritized time to myself, and I journaled a whole lot. Need to start doing more of that now, but really practicing that mindfulness. My friend, I want you to know your relationship with you 
is so important. How you know you, how you feel about you, often reflects and how you treat others. How you show up for yourself and how you show up for those that you love very most. It's crucial that you take the time to get to know you, especially in a world where we're constantly being told to do this, to be that, to look like this, where it's so easy to lose sight and lose who you truly are. And that is why building your offline presence has never been more important, never been more critical than right now. I couldn't be happier or more proud of you for being here today and I hope that you're planning to take action on building your offline presence with yourself today. It is the most valuable place to spend your time at this moment and it will give back to you more than anything else that is demanding for your time will at this point. If you enjoyed today's episode, please consider leaving me an honest review so I can know what I can do to improve and I can know what takeaways you are getting from the show. And if you have a friend who could really benefit from encouragement to begin building their offline presence, consider sharing this episode with them so they can join us on this path less traveled. Thank you so much in advance. I appreciate you so much. And I will catch you next week as I pull back the curtain on the second aspect that goes into building your offline presence. I can't wait to dive into that. And until then, I hope I'm going to see you inside our free community and I hope you have a wonderful week.